In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. Good morning, Father. Happy Easter. You know when we start back here, it's either Holy Saturday night, but there's no fire, so it ain't that, or we have baptisms. And if there's any perfect day to have a baptism or two, it's on Easter Sunday because this is really what Easter's all about, is our new life in Jesus Christ. And so this morning, these parents have asked to have their child baptized into the Catholic Church through the sacrament of baptism. So on behalf of all of us here at Most Blessed Sacrament, I first of all want to welcome Father Glenn here, who's also going to be doing one of those baptisms. But also I want to greet all of you who are here, as well as all our guests here today. And to the parents, I want to extend a special warm greeting to you. And I'd like to remind you of the great joy with which you have welcomed your child as a gift from God, the source of all life, who now wishes to bestow his own life on your child. And so, parents, what name have you given your child? Ryan James. Ryan James. Anthony Duane. Anthony Duane. And parents, what do you ask of God's church for your child? <clears throat> You have asked to have your child baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training them in the practice of our faith. It will be your duty to bring them up to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us by loving God and our neighbor. Parents, do you clearly understand what we are undertaking? We do. And to our godparents, are you ready to assist these parents in their duties as Christian parents? My dear children, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy today. And in its name, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of his cross. I now will trace that cross on your foreheads, and I invite the parents and godparents then to do the same. Now on this glorious day of Easter, we enter into the beauty of God's church as we now sing our opening song. Straight. 
through the entire season of Lent, we fasted from the great Gloria, and so now we sing that beautiful hymn of praise. day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlock for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God appointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us the witnesses chosen by God in advance, 
who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast, so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them. 
They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Hardly a day goes by that something he doesn't go without notice. A man of great simplicity and always speaking in truthful and honest ways. When I got home last night. We had a beautiful liturgy in the church last night. And oh, it must have been around 1130 by the time I got home after we had the reception downstairs for those who were received into the church fully last night in the beautiful Easter vigil, and I couldn't sleep right away. I was all wired up from the excitement of the Easter vigil, and it's Easter Sunday. It's the most exciting day of the year. So I uh, turned the TV on, and lo and behold, there's Pope Francis. And... He was preaching his Easter homily from the Easter vigil, had been recorded er from earlier, and as I listened to it, I says, you know, I think I'm going to borrow from him, not steal, but borrow. Because you know, in these two years that he's been Pope, he's been talking an awful lot about how we need to be a church that is always reaching out. He says there's a great danger when the church becomes self-referential, in other words, closed in on itself. And I think the local churches, we can easily do that. And we've probably been doing that now for over 100 years. And you don't grow that way. The words of Jesus, the final words that Jesus spoke when he left this world on Ascension Thursday was, go and make disciples. That's what we're all about as church. We're supposed to be going out and making disciples, bringing them in. And so as I was listening to his homily last night, again, that same theme struck me there, except it kind of touches us all more on a personal level. And so as I heard that homily, these are some of the things that Francis said. The men, they remained in the, they remained locked in the upper room. Yet it was the women who went to the tomb at the dawn on Sunday, that Easter Sunday, to anoint Jesus' body. Their hearts were overwhelmed, and they were asking themselves, how will we enter? Who will roll back the stone of the tomb? But here is the first great sign of a very great event. The large stone was already rolled away, and the tomb was wide open. Upon entering the tomb, 
they saw a young man sitting on the right side dressed in a white robe. These women were the first to see this great sign, the empty tomb. And they were the first to enter. Entering the tomb. It is good for us on this Easter day to reflect on that experience of those women because it speaks to us as well. For that is the reason why we are here today, to enter, to enter into the mystery which God has accomplished with this great day of love. We cannot live Easter without entering the mystery. It's not something intellectual, something that we only know or read about. It is more, much more. To enter into the mystery <clears throat> means the ability to wonder to contemplate the ability to listen to the silence and to hear the tiny whisper amid great silence by which God speaks to us. To enter into this mystery demands that we not be afraid of reality, that we not be locked into ourselves that we cannot flee from what we fail to understand, that we not close our eyes to problems or deny them, that we not dismiss our questions. To enter into this mystery means to go beyond our comfort zone, beyond the laziness and indifference which so easily holds us back and going out in search of the truth and beauty and love. It is seeking a deeper meaning, an answer, and not an easy one to the questions which challenge our faith, our fidelity, and our very existence. To enter into the mystery, we also need humility, the lowliness to abase ourselves, to come down from the pedestal of our I, which is so proud of our presumption, the humility not to take ourselves so seriously, recognizing who we really are, beautiful creatures with both strengths and weaknesses, sinners in need of forgiveness. To enter into the mystery, we need the lowliness that is powerlessness, the renunciation of our idols, our false gods. In a word, we need to adore Without adoration, we cannot enter into the mystery. The women were Jesus' disciples, and they teach us all this. They kept watch that Good Friday night and through the Saturday and to Saturday nights. They kept watch together with Mary and she, the Virgin Mother, helped them not to lose faith and hope. And as a result, they did not remain prisoners of fear and sadness amidst this tragedy of the loss of our Lord. You see, their hearts were anointed with love. And so they went forth on that first light of Easter morning. They went out carrying their ointments, 
And they went forth, and they found the tomb open, and they went in. They had kept watch. They went forth, and they entered into the mystery. My friends, may we learn from them to keep watch with God and with Mary, our mother, so that we too may enter into the mystery, because it is the mystery that leads from death to life. In a moment, we're going to celebrate two baptisms. And that's the beginning of that, that great moment of mystery that our Holy Father has been speaking about. It is the mystery that will lead these two children from death into eternal life. Please rise. We're going to be singing the Litany of the Saints, and as we're singing it, I ask the parents with their child to be baptized to please come forward and stand right in front of this large font right here. That's not the baptismal font, though, along with their sponsors, so please come forward. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetual and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint John Vianney. Saint Catherine, pray for us. Saint Teresa, pray for us. Saint Claire, pray for us. Saint Elizabeth, pray for us. All holy men and women, pray for us. I now invite the congregation to please be seated. In our baptismal ritual, there are two anointings with oil. The first anointing is the oil of the catechumens, and along with it is a very powerful prayer. It's called the prayer of exorcism. Now, that's nothing to be afraid of. An exorcism means simply is a powerful prayer saying, evil, get far away. I'm sure there will be no one to argue with us on that one. So, so let us pray. And if you would, just get there so I can do their necks, because that's what I'm going to be anointing. <laughs> Almighty and ever-living God, you sent your only Son into the world who cast out the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, and to rescue us from the kingdom of darkness and bring us into the splendor of your kingdom of light. We pray for these children. Set them free from original sin. Make them temples of your glory 
Send your Holy Spirit to dwell with them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear children, we now anoint you with that oil of salvation. In the name of Christ our Savior, may he strengthen you with his power, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, God uses the sacrament of water to give his divine life to those who believe in him. And so we turn to him now to ask him to pour his gift of life from that font over there onto these children that he has chosen. And so, dear parents and godparents, you have come here today to present this, your child for baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, they are to receive the gift of new life from God, which is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring them up in the practice of our faith See that the divine life which God gives them is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in their hearts. And so parents and godparents, if your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, renew now the vows of your own baptism, reject sin, profess your faith in Jesus Christ. This is the faith of our church. This is the faith in which your child is about to be baptized. And so, parents and godparents, please answer I do to these questions. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We're all proud to profess it in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. We're now going to do the baptisms. I'm going to do Ryan James first. Okay. And Father will be doing Anthony Duane. So Father can come over there with me already, I guess. But we're going to have just Anthony, I'm sorry, Ryan James's parents and godparents now. Please carefully go up those steps and I'll meet you right over there, okay? last question. Is it your will that Ryan James should be baptized in the faith of the church which we've all professed with you? Yes. Put his head over the font and everybody taking pictures, get ready because we only do it once. <laughs> no retakes. Don't worry. <laughs> Ain't going to hurt. All right. Why don't you get the godparents a little closer. There we go. And get his head right over the okay. font. <laughs> Ryan James, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. He can wipe his head off. Okay. There you go. Very good. Now you can go back down there, and we'll have Anthony. His parents, come on up with godparents. Father's going to come on over here too. The water is slightly cold because it was blessed last night at the Easter vigil, so, but they'll survive. All right, so let's get him over his head over the font and all the parents and godparents and children there, brothers or sisters or whoever else, everybody with cameras, and Father, whenever you're ready, go right for it, okay? Okay. 
Use your hand. <laughs> we do things messy here. <laughs> Amen. Okay, you guys can go back down there now. We got a few more things to do yet, and then we'll be done with the baptisms. Careful of the steps again. Let's go this way. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and has welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Amen. It smells real pretty, so don't worry. My dear children, you have become a new creation. You have clothed yourselves in Christ. See in these white garments that you are wearing the outward sign of your Christian dignity, with your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Amen. Tallest godparent. <laughs> Tallest godparent. All right, we'll help you with this one. We got to light the candle, and it has to be lit from... Come on up. Don't be shy. If you're tall, you might be able to do it. Otherwise, go up the steps might be easier. It's not as hard as you think. Once you get it lit, then go back down and stand next to your godchild. Make sure it stays lit. There you go. Very good. Receive the light of Christ. And receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. They are to walk always as children of the light. May they keep the flame of faith alive in their hearts when the Lord comes. May he go out to meet them with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. And last but not least, we got holy water. We give you a little bit of the baptismal water as well, okay? You can probably blow the candle out already. And you get to keep the candle. It's sort of like a birthday candle. See, you know, when we're baptized, we get two birthdays, our regular one, and today is our birthday as a Christian as well. And I always say, well, maybe make a cake every year around this time, on this day, and stick that candle in there. It'll last probably until about their 18 or so. I know you don't want to think that far ahead yet, but that will come fast, won't it? Yes, it will. And then Deacon Rick will give you boxes to put your candles in as well. There you go as a special remembrance of this day. All right, God bless you and welcome these two young children into our faith community.
Normally when we have a baptism in mass, I usually have you join in the profession of faith when they say the I do's, but today we have our own special renewal of our baptismal promises, so please rise. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of our own baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God and the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, and once again, Please, say, please answer, I do, with great conviction. And I always say, do it a little bit louder than we usually respond at Mass because we're chasing all evil as far away as possible. And so, do you reject Satan? I do. I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God the our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. I saw water flowing from the from its right hand side, oh, alleluia. And all to whom this water came were saved and shall say, alleluia. brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that He who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of His beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. As Christ has redeemed us through His resurrection, may the Church continue His ministry through our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all who proclaim the good news. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. May the presence of the risen Christ open the eyes of all leaders to promote peace, solidarity, and religious freedom throughout the world. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. 
May those who suffer from mental or physical illnesses, those in hospitals, nursing homes, shelters, and prisons, be sustained by the life-giving breath of Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For our pastor, Father Jim, for Deacon Rick and Deacon Pete, for all parish staff and volunteers who have dedicated time and talent for this beautiful celebration of Easter. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing for the sacrament of marriage, for all married couples, and for Arlene and Stephen Steinecke, who celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary, May the love of the risen Christ fill their hearts with joy. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For Anthony Dwayne Rust and Brian James Seeger, who have been baptized today, for all of the newly baptized and confirmed, may the risen Christ be their guide on their faith journey. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. As we celebrate our Lord's resurrection this day, we pray for the members of Most Blessed Sacrament Parish, for those we love and for those who have asked for our prayers. We pray for Ray O'Connor and all who have died. May they share in the glorious presence of the risen Jesus. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. Now we have a very young couple here today who's celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. So I'm going to ask Arlene and Stephen to please come forward. I want you guys to invite your children, family, Come on up. Why don't you just careful on the steps there, but just to stand up on the step and let's get the family up there as well and face out. Don't be afraid. It's Easter Sunday. There's all kinds of things going on today, right? We've got baptisms. We've got anniversaries we're blessing. And it's such a joyful, beautiful day. Stick a few more of you on that end. I feel like I'm going to lean this way. Okay. There you go. Let's be careful on the steps there. Lord God and Creator, we ask you to bless. We bless and praise your name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. And you likewise bless the union of Arlene with Stephen so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today amid the joys and struggles of their life. You have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant. Increase your love in them and strengthen their bond of peace so that surrounded by their children and family, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congratulations to 40 years. All right, Arlene, I'll give you a little kiss. So what's, so what's the secret of 40 years? Tell us. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> Enough said. All right. <laughs> you may go back to your seats. Careful of the steps, and everyone else may be seated. We'll begin now with the offertory.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us 
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating that most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable 
so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest now in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, for those sinners, open your abundance to your mercy. Graciously grant some, some share in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs, of John the Baptist, Jesus, Matthias, Barnabas, Missy Sal, Alexander, Petrinos, Peter, Lysita, Rachel, Agatha, Lucy, Anne, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all the saints. And we have to beseech you in your company, not weighing, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. And through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the whole Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, thank you. Peace, peace. Father. Yeah. Thank you. Happy Easter. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
my flesh for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live
And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up on the last day. Unless you of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood and drink of his blood you shall not have life within you and I will Please be seated. Pray to St. Michael, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. week from today is Divine Mercy Sunday, and as we have done for a number of years in our parish, we have all those special prayers of the Divine Mercy. Um, it will begin right after this Mass next Sunday. There will be confessions, there will be adoration, and of course the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3 o'clock as well. And, and at some point, I guess it kind of gets moved over to the Newman Center because it concludes at 8 p.m., over there with Father Jason, who will be celebrating Mass there as well. But check the bulletin for all of the different times of what's happening. You can be here for the whole thing or for whatever part of it you wish to choose, but it's a wonderful Sunday of our Lord's love and His great mercy as well. 
I want to thank all the people who made this Holy Week so beautiful. I have, as I, I always say it, I say, I have the easiest job in the world. All I got to do is show up. That's all I do is I just show up. Everything else is done. Everything's set up. Everything's decorated. All the music's been rehearsed, and everybody kind of knows what they're doing. And I just, as I said, I have the easiest job, and so that's why I'm very thankful for making this the easiest job in the world to do as well. So, again, my great thank you to everybody who made this week so beautiful and prayerful. And please know that all of you are in my prayers each day as we celebrate these beautiful days now of Easter of the presence of our risen Lord. Now, right after our Mass, downstairs, we have our Easter egg hunt, our annual Easter egg hunt. Now, that's limited to the young, okay? <laughs> so that means you have to be probably less than second grade, I would say. First grade, kindergarten, preschool, they're welcome down there. But after first grade, you're, well, I'm sure you got lots of Easter eggs at home, so just get them there, all right? Good. So right after Mass, downstairs, wait for me, because I'll give you the wave of the flag, and then off you go, and you have to look for them. There's probably hundreds of eggs hidden. It's downstairs, right? Because it's been kind of cold and damp these last couple years, so. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast Come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the masses and did alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today.